Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is the next in the series of the Scrap Buster videos where we work on putting the actual pages together. And yesterday we finished up through page, I think it was seven or eight. Let's see. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so today we're starting with page eight, and I think we go through page 15 or 16 or something like that. And so let's get started. All right. The next page that we're going to be putting together is a double envelope page. And envelopes are, again, one of those things that when you're um, making scrap busters, envelopes are really easy because, well, just because they are. They're super simple to make. And I put, oh, I think I probably put it in a little bag. Um, you can, you know, freehand it. You don't have to have a template. You can use a really inexpensive envelope punch board. And I actually use this mini punch board a lot more than I use the larger punch board. And I want to say this was like five or six bucks at Tuesday morning. So it was a good investment. And um, it's a purchase that I use quite often. So this particular page uses two of the envelopes, again, made with scraps. It's got journaling cards inside the envelopes. Um, again, made with scraps, and it's got a larger place in the back for a journaling card or a fold-over piece or what have you, and then it's got a scrap cluster on the front. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I now One of the comments I received was that it was just harder for some people to see, so I'll try to zoom in a little bit and not... I'm using... I'm filling two books, basically, so we're doing... I'm showing you one, and we're doing one together, but um, <clears throat> I want to be aware of the fact that people need to see what it is we're doing. So... I am going to show you the assembly on these envelopes and we'll put the whole piece together. And as I was doing this, as I was building this book, I tried to be more careful about not pre-assembling everything so you, you could see the process. But I think every once in a while I blew it, so I apologize for that. But um, I'll move this one aside and open this one up and we will put together. And I put the little bags here this time so that I would hopefully remember not to do it. All right. Okay, now when I put the pieces in, oh, I know what I did. Okay, now I remember. Now I remember what my thought process was. Okay, see, here you go. I glued the envelopes together and I glued the cluster on it and then we're just gonna put it down on the page. And then I realized, well, some folks, um, you know, that are newer may not know what that process is. So then I brought the extra pieces so I can show you how I did that. All right, and on that note, okay, so I showed you the mini envelope punch board, right? No, I don't remember what this was, but it was under $10 for for sure, whatever it was. Well, and I've had these, I think one of them even has a price tag on it, the mini envelope template. This was $8, and I think I bought this about 20 years ago. No exaggeration, no joke. And, it's a, and this makes the uh, coin envelope. And then here is a mini square envelope for three by three cards, and then here's a gift tag envelope. And so I've had these templates for... Well, here you go, 1998, so even longer than 20 years. Um, so this was $8, and I can make all of these plus more with this envelope punch board. Now, granted, it's not a coin envelope size, but still, same idea for, you know, less than that. So if you've got these, absolutely use them and work with them. But if not, you can, like I said, either freehand it or just get the envelope punch board. I used the envelope punch board because I have it and it's easy. All right, so what I did was I used the punch board and I happened to use braille paper for this just because I like the texture and this paper was kind of busy-ish. Um, so I made two different size envelopes and you can see that this is actually three different size envelopes and if I had a bigger page I could do something like this and put them all together. But what I did is I took two envelopes and I glued one on top of the other to make this configuration. And then I took, oh, here we go. I do have two envelopes here. So I happened to use the same kind, but maybe I would use this kind. Take one, take the other, glue them to make sure they fit on my page, right? And then I took uh, a naked cluster. And what I mean by a naked cluster is I do them in, in the series when I put them together. I'll do the scrap paper first. And then my second step will usually be to come in and add lace and sew if I'm going to do that. So, and I've done that. And then the last step is almost always to add some kind of embellishment to the top. It's often a label. Maybe it's a die cut. Maybe it's a picture. Maybe it's an image of something. Uh, maybe it's a ticket, but whatever. Whatever I'm going to put on the top, I'll do that last. So this is 
a stage two cluster for want of a better word. It's got the scrap paper and then it's been sewn and lace is added so I could, you know, just come in and this is a bigger envelope, overlap them a bit, glue them down. And then this is just a die cut that I have, um, it's a chipboard die cut that I've painted and put uh, Nouveau Crystal Glaze on. And so I'd come in and lay that on top and then maybe this piece here. Actually, I think I would lay it over like this. So that is the assembly process, basically. So that's why I put that in so you can see it. And then, because I have it pre-assembled like this, I will glue it. And I could use this as a tuck, but because it's so large and it takes up so much space on this particular page, I am going to do this like a pocket. So I'll glue on my outside edges. Oh, that was a, reminds me. I'm going to try to answer some of the questions that I've got. I um, This morning I answered some older questions and then some questions from yesterday's video. And I always forget that there is a way in YouTube to go see all the comments that I haven't seen. So they might be on different videos um, rather than just the video I just posted and um, there were unanswered questions. So I'm going to try to attempt, I'm going to attempt to answer most of those today. And one of the questions was benefits of reptile glue versus art glitter glue or say something else. Somebody asked, is it just the wiggle room? And that's absolutely one element. I like the fact that there's more wiggle room, but the reason there's more wiggle room is it's thinner. Um, so when I put it out, it's just not as thick as art glitter glue, which means it doesn't clog up this tip. Like frequently when I am crafting, I will forget to put the tip back on and I can leave this for 15, 20, 30 minutes and it doesn't clog up because the glue is a little bit thinner. And that makes a big difference because if you don't put your uh, stainless steel pin in the tip of your art glitter glue, it clogs up quickly. So it's a little bit thinner, so I have more wiggle room. It's a little bit thinner, so it clogs less. And I find that it holds every bit as well as the art glitter glue. And it, it picks up completely with a rubber cement. So if I overshoot the glue a little bit uh, when it's dry, I pick it up completely and easily with the rubber cement square. So... I have found a couple places where I like art glitter glue better, but they're few and far between, and I'm very pleased with the reptile glue. So there's the answer to that question. And we were letting this piece dry while I was answering that. And then these are just pieces. Actually, these are, and I'll even show you. I got a package when I bought the Tim Holtz paper. They had a package of different sized um, journaling cards. And I don't know why they call some of them journaling cards because there's no place to journal on them, but some of them have it. And I've been, been trying to use these. So these pieces are cut down journaling cards and then I just put coffee dyed copy paper on the back to make spaces to journal. And that is that. And this one, I just have a hole punch. So I just made it a little bit decorative on the edge. All right, and that is that page. So the, the scrap buster items we used on here are journaling cards, envelopes, and a scrap cluster. All right, next page. Now, there is an ugly spot on this page. I don't remember. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, on my glass mat, when I was heating something, it picked up the residual glue, and that's the ugly spot there. So I have to be aware of that and careful when I'm putting this next page together to try to cover that up because I don't like ugly spots. All right, and this next page, I'll show you. Ah, this is my original book, and this is what I call a Tracy Two-Side. And it's, it can be closed with a magnet. It doesn't have to be closed. But the idea is that it goes over the top or the edge of the page. Two side because it takes up two side of the page. And on one side, there might be a pocket or an embellishment or something. And on the other side, it maybe it's a scrap pad or something along those lines. And that's what I've got on this Tracy two side. So this was my original that I showed you. And this is the one we'll be making. Where did I put those pieces? Over over here. And here is the sample that I did already. Now, on the original, you notice that the scrap pad was on this side and the pocket was on this side. So it was kind of turned around like this. It was opposite. But I didn't like the way this piece looked on this page, so I just flipped it around. And that's the true beauty of this system is you can make it work for whatever you want. And... Yeah, that's the back. I just have a paper clip on top because I didn't put magnets on this one. 
um, to hold it in place. So it's just got a paper clip to hold it. And I just liked the way it looked better with the, um, it flipped over the other way. So the one we're doing, I don't remember which way it's going to go. If the pad's going to be, the scrap pad's going to be on one side and the pocket the other. I don't know which order it was. But the point is, it doesn't really make much difference. So this side is a scrap pad. And I showed in a video how to make a scrap pad. And then I just stamp on the, the top piece of tracing paper or what have you. Because I like the way it looks. And... Then I flipped it over and on the back, this is just a pocket. And then on the pocket, I put a shaped pocket and this just happens to be a circle. And I'll show you, I put the pieces in there to show you how I make it. And then um, a, a paper clip tag. So this is a Tracy two side. It's a bookmark, which is also a writing spot. It's a pocket. It's a, po a shaped pocket. And it is a paper clip. So, so you can see a lot of these pieces use multiple components um, in the creation. So we'll put this together. And this one is just a little bit different. And you'll notice that, that even though the elements might be the same, the way I lay them out or what I use to make them might be a little bit different. So you'll get completely different looks with the same pieces. So this is also a Tracy two side, but um, instead of going over the top, this one does definitely have a magnet. Instead of going over the top, this one goes around the edge of the page. Okay? Same exact idea, but it goes on two sides of the page, but it's going over the edge of the page. Okay? And this has the pocket on the front, and again, the shaped pocket. And again, with the tag, it's a paper clip tag, just to hang, hanging decor decoration. I could have put a pocket on here, but... For this one, I just wanted the hanging decoration. And those are all in videos, and I don't remember what video numbers. But they're all pieces that we made in the Scrap Buster videos. Okay. This is a journaling card and with coffee dyed paper on the back. And I did that, even though this is around the edge, because I wanted to hide that ugly spot. And the journaling card fits in here. Plus, I kind of really liked the blend of the busy colors. And I know there's a lot of busy colors, but I just kind of liked the blend of those. And this is the journaling card that fits into the pocket. And I didn't know if I wanted a tab on here or a bit of lace. I wasn't quite sure because I hadn't put the whole thing together because I was waiting for the uh, crystal glaze to dry on that. And you know what? Maybe I'll just leave it that way. Maybe I won't put any extra because there's the lace here and here. I'll think about it. I could put a tab here. I could put a ticket here. But I've already got two tickets here and a stamp. Maybe I could put a stamp there or a bit of lace or a bit of ribbon. I don't know. Or I may just leave it because I've got, as you can see with all the different patterns, I've got plenty going on. And that's the next page done. All right. We'll flip it over here. Oh, I know what I was going to do on this one. Now, this is a solid page and they're, you know, it's kind of stark. And so what I, oh, sorry, backtrack one. I was going to show you how I did this particular shape pocket. Um, I forget sometimes that there are new people and what may be intuitive to somebody who's done this a lot may not be as clear to somebody who hasn't done it as much. So I used my circle punch. And this one's two and a quarter, two and a half, something like that. You can use dies as well and um, cut three of the same size. I mean, you don't have to cut three. You can cut two, but this is why I cut three when I cut them, because I'll make two. So I cut one of them directly in half, and then I will ink just this edge so you can see where it's going to go or where the pocket starts and stops. It doesn't blend into the background. Now you can do different color paper. It doesn't have to match. I just had bits of this and then I'll glue on the, this half circle just on the outside edge of the half circle and glue it right down like that. And then I've got a place to put a paper clip or I can turn it this way and put a booklet or a, booklet or a notepad or a pocket flip or something like that. So that's basically how you make a shaped pocket. And this was with the edge of the braille paper and I thought that added some cool interest so I could do it like this or like this or however. Anyway, that's how you make those. Okay, this, um, I'll put this next, here we go, put this next page on after that, page 11. But what I did is I just grabbed a couple of stencils. And stencils are one of those tools that are super handy because they last forever and they can add a little bit of subtle background or interest. A stamp will do the same thing. And I did stencils just so we could kind of see, nah, lines, don't want that. Um, 
that could be a maybe, but you know what? Before I decide on what I want to put on this page, maybe it makes more sense to put this page together so I can see how these two pieces will look together. All right. So in our original book, this was what I call a stamp card. You know, this is a glassine or tracing paper pocket and with the idea of including stamps on a pocket. So I've got a pocket on top of a pocket. And then this is just a notepad. And then this is a bookmark or a journaling cluster. And then this is a tab. All right, this is on our original, okay? I'm gonna use the exact same components, but they're gonna look very different. And I think I added one. I think I substituted instead of having a tab because I didn't have any more of these old bells. I think I did something else. So anyway, I'll, sh I'll show you what we did there. So that's my original back from the flip through. And on this one, I did a belly band. A, uh, there's a couple different kinds of belly bands when I make them in the videos, but one of the types of belly bands that I make is a snippet belly band. And that's where I just take all kinds of paper and sew them together, right? And it's a great quick way to use up scraps, but it's easy to overlook this because I normally store it in a roll like this and I store it in a separate spot because of the size. And so it's easy to forget about it and I wanted to make sure I included it. So what I did here is I put the belly band horizontally and, and then I used the stamp card. And instead of putting a stamp in the stamp card, I used a notebook. So it's just a little itty bitty notepad notebook with a tiny tuck pocket and a little tag just for fun. Oh, and my, I was tired, my sense of humor, 007, you know, I, I'm going to kill this project kind of a thing. And, but I mean that in a good way, but it's just for fun. And so a little, a little notebooklet, basically, instead of putting stamps in there. And I just glued that whole piece down because this was, again, made with scraps. And then here, because this is a belly band, I used a just a little notepad that I can flip over the top. And then I've got this, I think I picked it up at, I don't know, it was almost nothing cost-wise. It's just a little itty bitty flower stamp. And then I colored it. So for the new folks, actually I'll do that. I'll do that off to the side in just a moment. Um, I'll show you how I did that because I've had people ask. So I just put an image on the top of my notepad just so it wasn't a plain solid colored piece of uh, a plain piece of paper with no interest on it. So I stamped on the top of that and tucked that over my belly band. And then this is just a simple note card. And the reason I'm showing you this particular note card is these are things that most people would throw away. This little tiny bit of ribbon, I don't know if you can see it, and the tiny little scrap edge, raw edge of lace over a tab. But I like the interest that it adds, and this is the reason I save them in my little basket. Now, it's not for everybody, and if it's not a look that you like, toss them. But I kind of like the way they, they go together, and I like that I'm using scraps. And so and that's the reason I save them. Just takes a regular journaling card, journaling card and adds a little bit of interest. And then I tucked that in the very back. So that's how I did it in the sample that I made today. And now we're going to put it together. And again, um, this on this pin, this was the, the solid piece of paper because, you know, they were laid out a little bit differently, though similarly. And so the busy belly band, snippet roll belly band worked great on this page and um, the colors worked better for the Tracy two-sided pocket on that one. But here I happened to have, and this is around the edge, so I can't move it into the middle. And this just happened to be, you know, this was a file folder and our file card, time card, time card. That's the word I'm looking for. And this is the back and it was plain. And I didn't really love that, but I thought it'd be a kind of a cool way to use a stencil. So we'll do that. So it makes sense to put this page together so I can see what they look like and then decide on which stencil I'm going to have. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll dump these pieces out. And you'll see that this one looks different than the other two. Quite a bit different. All right. So I started again with a stamp card, and this one's just a little bit deeper of a stamp card, okay? Started with a stamp card, and I am going to glue this down. And I don't think I wanted it at the bottom. I think I wanted a little bit of that pretty pattern paper to show. But I'm gonna make it into a pocket, so I'm gonna glue three sides. 
And I guess I could answer one of the other questions. Um, no, I may not. I, I wrote the questions and responses down on the paper that I use as my ink paper and my clue paper, so it's kind of a hot mess. I'll have to I'll have to focus on what it says. I can't read it easily. I was being too efficient for my own good. All right. Glue this down and hold it. It doesn't, it really doesn't take long. I just, like I said, want to make sure that it's down before I put anything in it. And push it down. Okay. And then this, oh, here we go. This, this is just an extra piece of coffee dyed card. And I had um, a loose bit of doily and I just kind of sewed it over the top. And you know, I just add, add a little bit of lace, a little bit of interest, a standard journaling card and added a twist to it. And see, I didn't let it dry completely. I didn't push down, which is why I usually clamp it because the clamp holds it in place when my fingers don't. Oh, see, I should have put it down a little bit lower, but you know what? That's an easy fix. I'll just cut a little bit off the bottom, and then I'll ink it later. I'll make you watch me ink it. But I'll just cut a little bit off the bottom because I didn't glue it low enough. And now it's not hanging over the top. And then here is a little notepad, right? The other one had a notepad with a die cut and a little bit of a cluster on the front. That's some old German book page. And I'll put this over the edge right here, right? And then this is a little notebook, okay? Just the same, you know, blue paper with a tiny bit of scrap, I mean, a tiny bit of scrap ribbon, and then one of the labels, and <clears throat> excuse me, that I get from Carry It, Witchcraft Do You Do? The number labels, love those. And tuck it in, and that's done. Okay, so now that it's done, I can see, do I want that kind of a pattern? Uh, maybe, but maybe not. That's a little too busy with this floral print. And that's a good thing to keep in mind because this is a really busy page. Maybe I want something really subtle right here. So that, that's a maybe. Um, this, this one was a no. Uh, these are mostly Tim Holtz, though not all. Uh, the diamond. Mm, I actually kind of like the diamond with that. But nah, still not my favorite. The floral. Well, I've got flowers here, flowers here, flowers here. So the swirly floral might be way too busy, even though I use that one a lot. You know, here is a script font, and that might actually be a good choice because I don't have, I mean, I have words here, but it's book page words, and it's, you know, like Times New Roman or something along those lines, and this is a script, and I've got an old German here, and so maybe I think I like that one best so far. Um, oh, that one's really cool, this kind of a diamondy pattern. Maybe some of you, but I like that it mimics this. Mm, I think if this were a little bit smaller writing, I might go for it, but I'm liking this one best so far. And and this is kind of how I look at it and process it and, and do it when I'm making the decisions myself. Numbers, nah, I don't really want any numbers there in there. Though that might be okay because it could mimic the numbers here. So maybe numbers would be a good idea. Hmm, I wish I could hear what you guys are saying. And then this is just an alphabet now, wrong kind of a page. This brick pattern, I really kind of like that. It's different, but it's subtle. And it's not quite as busy as this. But then again, I'm only going to add a touch. I'm not filling in this whole thing. I'm just going to add a touch. So maybe that's a little bigger than what I need. Again, here's numbers. This is more of a random number than a patterned number. And it would mimic this. So that is a distinct possibility. And so is this one. These two are my distinct possibilities. Now, this crosshatch pattern is really, really cool, but it's not the right feel for this page. So, and same thing with these clocks, not are the watch gears and such. And this is more honeybee kind of a thing. And this one is kind of a more freeform modern art. And I kind of like that too, but again, just a little busy with the other paper. And too big and too busy. And I, I do this all the way through. Okay, so I've got it down to these two. And I kind of really like that because it mimics this. And I kind of really like that because it mimics this. So, you know what? Just for the sake of it, this is the one on there right now. I am going to put the numbers. And maybe some of you are screaming, no, Corey, don't do it. But I'm going to do it. And I'll show you why I'm going to do it this way. Because it's going to be a super subtle pattern. So I just opened this 
book up and I'm only going to put it right here. I'm going to use my ink box and um, put a little bit of ink on here and just lightly go over it in a few spots. I am not going to put a lot of ink down. Oh, you can't even see it. Look, it's so light that I didn't even put enough down. Okay, well, let's see. Maybe I need a little bit more. And I'm not going to put it in every spot. And yeah, okay, good. I like that. Oh, I do like that. And you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe this needs a little, a little bit of pattern here. Okay, there we go. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see. Mm, that didn't do it hard enough. See, I'm not, I'm pressing really gently. So, okay, cool. I kind of like that. I don't know how well you can see it, but, but it's, the idea is for a subtle effect. Okay, and I do like the numbers on here. I like that it mimics the numbers here and it's light and it's soft and it's subtle. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the way that came together. All right. And if you didn't like it, you put something over it. You put book page or something over it. So there's no harm in giving it a shot. But that's my process. And I know that's probably more than some of you want, but there you go. I explained it. All right, moving on. Next. Um, in the original book, so we did this, we did this page. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, these are the exact, mm, am I even remotely in frame? These are the exact same elements. This is a stamp card, stamp card, notepad, notepad, journaling card, journaling card. Here, I took the tab off and added a notebook. So they look completely different, but they're the same pieces. And that's the idea of combining different pieces in different ways. You get a variety of different looks. And here too, the only difference was I added a belly band here. And even these two are very different, but with the same pieces. Ah, before I move on, I'm going to show you how to do this. So I will show you, I'll move this back and I'll show you what I do. And I'm just going to use my notepad on this. I will just turn it over here. Now watch, in just a couple minutes, I'm going to say, what did I do with those notes? I'm right here. Okay, my method, just because... Here it is. I knew I'd put it aside so I wouldn't forget. All right, my method for doing something like that. Um, you know what maybe I'll do? I'll just grab, rather than using this, I will grab a scrap. Oh, here we go. Here is a scrap of card, cardstock, coffee dyed cardstock, okay? And I'll use this for something. So I've got that. Now, you can see the, the coffee dye on there, which is a cool look, but I want just a little bit more texture. So I've got this Hero Arts Bold Stamp, and this is a cursive stamp, okay? And I even leave it on this plastic thing so I know what the stamp is, and I wrote it on here. So I'm just going to the ink box, right? I'm going to randomly tap it. And that's one of the things I love about this. You don't have to stamp perfect images. And in fact, I almost don't want to stamp perfect images. So I've, so first generation stamping, I inked it and I'm going to stamp it. Okay. That's first generation stamping. Now I want second generation stamping because I only want a little bit of the image to go. See, you can see, I'll move in so you can see a little bit more. Um, I just want a faint little image of some of the words in the background. And that's exactly the effect I was going for. Okay. Just to provide a background for my flower. So it's not putting a flower on a stark piece of paper. And then you can use different kinds of coloring mediums, but for the sake of speed and ease, I like to use um, my brush markers. All right, so simple images make it easier to color because I don't have to worry about coloring five or six different pieces and places and such. So I'm just going to color the petals of the flower, this orangey, burnt orangey color, and then the stem will be this green color. Now, the more tightly wound your paper is, the longer it will stay wet. So I'm gonna put my Seth After Vintage Beeswax right there. And you know what, I let that dry a little bit. So if it dries a little bit, just add a little bit more color. And it'll be wet. All right, and I will stamp that right on top of the text. And oh, I smushed it too much. And then I'll put the beeswax right on. I don't give it time to dry because 
I love the fact that the beeswax, oh, the, it's, a, it's not really beeswax, it's beeswax inside embossing powder. And this was a different container. Um, the one I got for the Seth Apter Vintage Beeswax came in like a, a pouch. And I it's way easier to pour in a, it's obviously not green sparkle in a container like this. And then I would just, I'm not going to do it here because nobody wants to hear the heat gun. And then I would heat this and when I'm, when all is said and done, you get an image, something like that. You've got just a little bit of a text as a background. This is just a tiny smidge of washi. And then, hmm, can you see it? I don't even know. It's just a little bit of dimension and texture where the beeswax, the, the beeswax embossing powder raises it up a bit. It's a subtle effect, but I really like it. So that's how I get it for those of you who are asking. All right, next set of pages. We're ready to move on. Okay, so this one is just a scrap of coffee dyed tracing paper and then a journaling card and a pocket, a journaling card with a ruffle. And on the original in this one, I had a cluster, a scrap cluster with that tab. I had the journaling card with some extra die cuts and then I had the scrap, scrap ruffle on the journaling card. So I've got two journaling cards and a cluster and two pockets layered on top of each other. So that's what we're going to do here, okay? And two journaling cards with a scrap ruffle, right? And two pockets. But here I had, I got this punch a while ago. It's just a little file folder. Oh, and I meant to do it. Oh, well. with the file folder, it's kind of cool. You can glue a little bit up the sides like I did here and make a pocket, or you can do an accordion fold on writing. And so when you open this up, there's this big long writing thing that comes down. And I meant to have that in here and I forgot. So here, it's just a little pocket on top of these two pockets. And I could have done a tuck spot in the back, but already this is getting really thick. And I just cut, put a couple tickets on there. So maybe when you're doing your journaling and you want a little bit of a decoration, you pull it out and you put the little ticket on there. And that's the purpose for putting these kinds of little embellishments and decorations on. One, because they look good, but two, because you can use them on your writing when you're doing your journaling. Or this is large enough, I could put a photo and then put a caption underneath this too. So something to keep in mind. Then the same idea here. I could put, like on the back of this, I could put, oh, not that ticket because it's too close to the color. But I could take one of these pieces and do my writing and then just put a little ticket or something on the back. Okay. So file folder and then this is just a cluster. This is just a tiny little Tracy Fox bird image and some scrap pieces of lace and an ever-present label. And that's what we're going to do on here. And I'm going to put... Oh, there's the page that goes in here. See, I was afraid I was going to do that. Get them all turned around and mixed up. Okay, so that's the page that goes here. Yeah, that's the page that goes here. So here are all my pieces. And I pulled them out. And you're wondering, Corey, what do you have that big huge strip for? I was going to show you quickly how I make a scrap ruffle. All right. Okay. I glued, or I sewed this coffee dyed tracing paper. And then this is just a scrap of one of those journaling cards, right? And I sewed it on to make a pocket on top of a pocket. Now, if I didn't sew this on the page, why in the world would I sew around the edge? And the reason I do that is because tracing paper will warp a little bit, even when you use, because it's so thin, even when you use Fabri-Tac or um, thin line glue, you can see it. When I sew and ink the edges, you can see the glue a whole lot less. That's my whole purpose. I mean, I like the way sewing, edged, sewing edges look, but that's the whole purpose for doing it. So when I glue this down, um, I'm gonna glue it on three sides so I can make a side pocket. You're not gonna see the glue nearly as much because of the stitching and the inked edges. And so in my mind, that makes it a wonderful thing. And I'm going to attach it to the edge. And I made it just a little bit smaller than the paper. And I will, while I'm doing the rest of it, I will clamp this down. It, because the paper's so thin, it dries even faster. But um, I just like the extra hole that it gives. 
Now you can use binder clips. You don't have to have these quilting things. You can use paper clips. Um, you can use your fingers. It's just, these are easy, they're convenient, and um, I like them. So that's what I use these. Okay, now it's clamped down. All right, this is a journaling card and I just rounded the edges. Somebody asked me a couple days ago, I have a couple different kinds of rounders, but this one, I think I bought it on Amazon. I don't even think it's We Are Memory Keepers though. I believe they make one. And it gives you three different rounded corners. Okay, you've got a super fine corner, a tiny little corner where it takes just an itty bitty off and that says four millimeters. And then the next size up is a seven millimeter, so you can see the difference in those two corners. And then the last one is a deeper, and that says 10 millimeters. Let me make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. And I've, it, you can see the difference in those corners. So that's the corner render I use. It's handy, um, it's easy, and it wasn't spending at all. Is it a must have? No, but if you like rounded corners, then you know, it comes in handy. There's no way I'd wanna cut those with a scissor. You certainly can, but I wouldn't want to. So this is just an extra piece of that six by six paper. And because I had so much going on with this page already, I mean, the paper itself is busy and there's a lot of embellishments. I thought the writing would go well. So that's a real large journaling card. I could put a photo on here and then some journaling if I wanted to, if I were using it for that, or I could just write a lot. This, ah, oh, here we go. This is the piece that I'm going to use for my ruffle edge. And I thought I'd show you this. This is a strip of the Tim Holtz paper. And when I'm making a ruffle, I take a long strip and then I fold a piece over and I don't, I deliberately don't make it line up perfectly. I kind of cattywampus it a little bit on purpose. You know, I want it, I don't want them to match. I want it to look like, here, I'll show you here. I want it to look like a ruffle. I want it, you could, I want you to be able to see the fact that it's kind of ruffly. Now, if you want it straight, certainly make it straight, but, and I don't measure it and I don't make it perfect. I don't, I don't try to make it pristine by any means. And just because I like that, that haphazard kind of a look and I'll do this all the way down. Now you could glue in here as well, but I'm going to sew it when I'm done. And so once I'm done with this, I, I finish all my creases. I lay it on my edge of my page and then I will use a zigzag stitch. Um, that's me and that's what I like. But that's how you make a ruffle. If you didn't want to use a sewing machine, you could just glue this on when you're done. So I'll, I'll finish that up later. Nobody needs to see the whole process. We're just going to pretend that that ruffle is on the edge there. Okay, so that's there. And then here is that little file folder punch. And I'm gonna glue the edge. Glue the edge. And I'll hold that down. And I don't think I got the same kind of pieces. I just got the, I mean, they're, they're the same idea, but they're different, different bits. I don't know why I put that butterfly in there. Uh, oh, maybe to give us an option. Uh, maybe I may put it in the wrong envelope too. That could have happened. All right. Now, when I'm gluing this down, I want this card to be able to go in and out. So I won't glue the whole thing down. I'll just glue most of it. And I will put that, oh, right about there, because I want it to overlap. Because when you don't have everything lined up straight, it provides eye movement throughout your page. It makes your eye kind of go where you want it to go. See, so this still moves in and out. And that will work there. Okay, this should be dry now. All right, this truly is just a little bit of lace, and that one's a little bit, it's not even lace, it's a, kind of like a cotton something, or rather trim, I guess. And I will take that off because that was just a little big and a little bulky, but I wanted to use it. And this is a itty bitty Tracy Fox label bird with, um, I put some glossy, I keep saying glossy accents, have it, used that for years in stamping. Um, Nouveau Crystal Deluxe. And then maybe I'll put it like that. And then there's this little number label. Hmm, maybe I want this up a little higher. I don't know. I didn't play with this beforehand, obviously, because I actually think this might be a little big and bulky. So when that happens, I bring the scrap bin down. And these are just itty bitty pieces. And I will find, here we go, look, 
Oh, that's really pretty. I like that. It is just a tiny corner of tatted lace. And I really like it. And I really like the way that looks with it there. And do I like this? I don't know that I even want this piece on here. Maybe this is the problem. Well, I know I like these two, so I'm going to put these on. And I can always come back and put a different label on later if I want to. And I think I want it down like that. Yeah, I like that. And then I'll put the bird on. Something fell. I like the bird. You know, maybe the problem with this is it should be horizontal and not vertical. Okay, well, I've got this little itty bitty piece here. I don't like the red. The red competes too much. Well, there is a little bit of red over here, but um, I think I want a smaller label and I think I want no red. So I think that's what I'll do, but I'll, I'll get a different piece because I, I don't want to pull down the bin and search through it right now. But I'll add a tiny little bit there. And then I've got some tags. And I've got a couple of different ones. Okay, that one. And I like the little red star. No, that one. Maybe I would like the red one now because there's red in that. Maybe that would pick it up. But I still think it's just a little too big and a little too busy. It is. It's just a little too big and a little too busy. It takes away from the birdie. And it's upside down. So glad I noticed that. It, when it's this tiny, it's hard for my eyeballs to see. Yeah, it's just a little too big and a little too busy. Maybe I'll even just leave it like that. I kind of like it just that way. All right. And with the exception of adding our ruffle, sewing that ruffle on, this page is done. I'll put the scrap bin back. Uh, moving on, next page. Okay, here are the pieces. And... And the original book, this is a fold down. Laura Bame, A Papered Soul. I, this was the first place I saw it, and I'm sure other people do it, but it's a fold down writing spot. And so it's a fold down writing spot. It's a die cut on top of a die, a die cut on top of a die cut, a label. And then this is just, uh, I even put them over here so I could show you. So the jump rings. I put two jump rings on this, right? Uh, a Tim Holtz paper clip. Two tiny little Tim Holtz paper clip. And then these are... Uh, there's a name for these and it's escaping me right now. It's a jewelry thing. It's a ribbon crimp. That's it. A ribbon crimp. And so I just took one of the little ribbon crimps and that, and that darker metal and put one of those ribbon crimps on there. So I'll put this aside. So that's, that's how I created this, with a ribbon crimp, and then I tied the bow on there, and those three pieces. And then my, my formula, my personal formula for ribbon crimps is I will take a piece of ribbon, you know, just standard ribbon, whatever width, and then something with a little bit of a texture, like maybe it's ribbon but with a more lumpy, bumpy texture, and then a piece of lace. And when I'm making something really tiny like this, I try to choose different sizes. And I just like the combination of those pieces, which is why I chose it. And then this will hold down. The, so the fold down would drop and this tiny little um, ribbon bit holds that in place. Okay, so that's the original. Did I take something else? No. And then the one I did earlier today is same thing. It's a fold down. This one's not quite as wide because I had different scraps of ribbon, but I have my same layered. There's a piece of ribbon. There's a different kind of a ribbon, like a cotton ribbon with a texture and then a bit of lace. And here I had a die cut and I think I even saved these. I got these, oh man, a really, really, really long time ago, the dies. And they cut, they came in a pack of four and they are a pain in the tush to get all the little negative pieces out. But they're really cool. Um, they're kind of fun. They're, I don't know, the size of a 50 cent piece, I guess. And those are the four different ones that came in it. And I can't tell you where I got it because I've had it for a really long time. And um, somebody else had gifted me that other uh, die cut. It came in Happy Meal. But I 
tried to emulate it with what I had. You could use a punch. I'm sure there's lots of punches that emulate this. So a punch, a fold down, a ribbon crimp, a die cut, and a label. So that's this one. And this paper was so busy that I wanted to go with something simpler with the pattern paper I chose on the fold down and the die cut. Here it is a um, braille page. So I need to I needed to make sure. Right. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to show you how I. Okay, now I know what I'm doing. I was going to show you how I made the fold down, and the fold downs are pretty straightforward. But here is the fold down that's going on this page, right? And it's going to go right about here. Yeah, I don't need to put it all the way to the edge. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And on this one, in fact, I will use glue stick. And then if it lifts up anywhere, because um, this is really thin copy paper, just regular standard copy paper. If it lifts up anywhere, I will use uh, wet glue. But uh, I'm going to move it in just a bit and put it right about there. So I'm going to glue that down. You go on the other side to make sure it's stuck. Okay. And coffee dyed toilet. Sorry, my chair is squeaky. I keep meaning to WD-40 it, and I forget. Now, this is one time that I generally like art glitter glue. Now, these aren't super fine, so it's not a big deal, and it works great with the reptile glue. But when I'm doing something that's super fine die cut-wise, I prefer the art glitter glue, but that's pretty much the only time lately that I like art glitter glue better. And I've been using art glitter glue for years, so, so I'll put that down in that corner. And here is my ribbon crimp, I think is what those are called. I'll put that on top to hold, hold to hold the drop down journaling in place. And I just used jump rings. Oh, the jump rings, there we go, at the bottom. And a bit of ribbon. Now, this is one of the die cuts that I cobbled together. And you can see as thin as this is and fine as this is, it still works. And it gets just a small amount of glue on so it doesn't seep out. And oh, I should have put that up a little bit higher. Oh, well, live and learn. I should have moved this up a little bit higher. But that's okay. It'll still work and you'll still see the petals on that. And then this is just a label and I'll glue that label on right here. And I just chose it for the color balance basically. I liked the uh, the green with the Corey. The green with the green with the green up here. And so I just wanted that, that color balance. And I'm gonna call that page done. All right, moving on. Okay, in the original book. The original book. I think these are the last two pages today. They are. In the original book, this was a collage page with a negative space, tuck spot, journaling card, tab. So those are all Scrap Buster items. And the one right next to it was a booklet with a cluster. And a glassing bag with some stamps or faux stamps if you were doing faux stamps and a notepad or a booklet whichever tied it down and then just a journaling card with a lace flap overlay just again little bits of scraps of that lace and I made the booklet into a pocket and then tied this up so there's the next two pages okay in here I did the negative space I switched the pages because of the way that they went together, I swapped the pages and I did not do a journaling collage page in this book because I really like this paper and I really like this paper and I didn't want to cover them up with a collage page. So like later on right here is uh, an empty page and I'll probably do the journal coll or the collage page there. You know, I switch it around a little bit based on the, the needs of the book. But here's a um, negative space with tracing paper behind it as a tuck spot. Here is a journaling card with more of those little scraps, and this one's just a trifold. And the stitches on the inside here, I just decided to put a little bit of washi and then um, regular scotch tape over that. Did a trifold rather than a fold over because this paper is really pretty, and I wanted to see it. 
and then just a cluster here, a scrap cluster. And we'll come back to this page and I'll explain why I did it that way later. All right, so let's assemble that here. Now this, in this book, this one is the solid back side of a braille page. So what I did was I did the collage page here in this book. And, you know, essentially you're still gonna get the same exact elements. You might just get them in a different order. And all I did for the collage page is I took a piece of book paper and flipped it over and I picked the colors that I kind of wanted to mimic with the page that it was going next to. So I didn't want it to compete, but at the same time I wanted it to coordinate. So I just chose, I like the braille and I like the solid colors. And so I just kind of picked colors. I wanted to make sure and get some of this gold in here. And so I picked picked gold here and then gold here. It's, it's not really gold, yellowish gold. And so I made sure I included those colors over here so that the two blended together well. And all I do with this, and it's it's fairly thin because even though there's some card stuck here, it's on uh, the thinnest dictionary book page I could find. So it doesn't take up too much. Now this, oh, I just pulled it off. Well, I can fix that. I'm taking it off because I wanna glue this page down. I'll put it back together. And I am going to glue my collage page on here. Now you can collage directly on the page you're working on. But do you see here I have all these sewn lines? I love the way that looks. So it's just as easy for me. And this is a great way to, if you make a mistake on a page or if you get a big old ugly spot or, or whatever. Um, you know, this is a great thin way to cover that up. So I am going to... Oops, I should put it on top of my glue paper so I don't get glue on my work surface. Oh man, of course I'm having my glue stick. Oh, I have enough, I think, for this. I have my glue sticks. Okay. All right, glue stick. Move that to the side because it's a gloppy mess. And I will line it up with the outside edges of my pages. And again, I'll come back with um, the wet glue if needed. If like there's a place where it lifts up or it doesn't cover completely or it doesn't attach completely. I will lay this down. Now you see over here, I am covering my fabric hinge a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not covering it completely. You can still see it there and it just looks good with the, um... oh, there's a little hole in there, that's cute. The the paper that I, the collage paper that I used just had a, I don't know, left over from something, there's an itty bitty hole in it. So it's kind of fun. Now there's nothing clamping this here, so I'm probably gonna go back with my wet glue and tuck a little bit of glue under here. Oh no, it's, it's holding pretty well, so maybe I won't even need to do that. So there is the collage page. And then here you can see on the back, I run it through the die cut machine. And this one only had one piece of the positive space that needed to go on top of the negative space. And I made sure I glued my coffee dye tracing paper down. And now this is gonna be my belly band. And I, am I wanting this as a belly band or a tuck spot on this one? Hmm. I don't know that it matters so much. Um, I want this one as a tuck spot because of where it is. Okay, but on the original, I had a little tab. So maybe I want a little tab up here. And if I do, I would glue, glue and sew it. <sighs> you know what? I won't like it if I don't sew it. So let's see. I'm going to glue this on and I'm going to ask you to talk amongst you. Sorry, I should have planned that a little bit better. I'm going to ask you to talk amongst yourselves for just a moment. Sorry, there's the monsters. Somebody's walking a dog. Um, I'm going to go sew that on real quick because, yeah, I won't...
right, sorry about that. Oh, squeaky chair, sewing machine. Oh, I'm kind of a hot mess, but that's on my agenda of things to do. I have the WD-40 in my truck, so I need to get it out and work on this poor chair. Okay, so I sewed that tab on. I'm going to ink that up just a little bit because I use off-white thread 95, no, 98% of the time. And um, I just ink it up to whatever color I want. And it's usually this walnut stain. Actually, I should keep a couple of these here because I am going to now glue this on here. And I think I'm going to go right to the edge. All right, gluing this in place. And this is, you know, an authentic process. This is kind of what I do every time I make a journal. I make mistakes and figure out how I can fix those mistakes or if I have to start from scratch. But honestly, truthfully, most of the time, there's a way to fix the mistakes so that I don't have to start from scratch. Now, I was mindful of the band that we're putting around this when we're all said and done. So I deliberately didn't put my tab in the middle because then it would stick out the edge of my page when we're putting the band around it. So keep that in mind. And I didn't say it as I was doing it, but that's kind of important if you're planning to use the same type of closure we did with the lace or um, cotton lace ribbon closure. Um, this actually though, you know, this one I might just use sari silk simply because I don't want the edging lace competing with the band lace. I'm wondering if it might be too much, so, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. All right, that is on there. Now, these pieces, these are like the beginnings of a cluster, basically. They are just scraps. Is that upside down? I can't even see. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe I goofed. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted this right here. And I want this like here, like this, I think is what I was thinking. Yeah, like that. So my little cluster on cluster, because of the size of this, there was a lot of blank space. So, oh, this is the right side. Okay, that was the back side. Yeah, that makes more sense. All right, I like this better. Whew, glad I looked. I'm going to glue that on. And I'll put the gloss on that later. And how did I want that to go? Did I want it like that? Maybe. Yeah, I think that's how I want it. And what I did is I just took two different labels and I sewed them together with a zigzag stitch, a super fine zigzag stitch. Maybe you can see it better on the back. And I just have to decide where I want it. I think I want it to go up to that edge. And maybe I should make it straight. I'll hold that in place. I'll take this off. And there you go. Uh, let's see. I know this was out because I was going to show you how I do the fold down. Darn it. All right. When I do the fold down, which was on this page, and I meant to do it there, but I goofed. Um, so I take a long piece of paper and fold it in half. Then, if I don't need a very specific size, then I take one edge and fold it not quite to the middle and put a crease in it. And then I fold it over and then I do the same thing again. So I'm just kind of rolling it up or folding it up and then I'll put the creases in, All right? And that's how I do my fold down. And then this piece glues onto the back and I'll put whatever decoration or scrap paper or whatever on the front and then it folds all the way down. That's why that was there. So there you go, fold down. If I need it to a specific size, like let's say I've got three inches, well then I'll take my paper and I'll score it at three inches and then I'll start folding it. All right, and here again is just a little trifold. And this one I didn't put washi on the back, I just put a piece of that um, real old scotch tape that I've quote unquote aged with alcohol ink. All right, and then three little bitty scraps just sewed onto the front because it's interesting. 
Um, yeah, like that. All right, and then that is that page done. Now, what I did here for this last page that we're doing today is I kind of got ahead of myself and I put the whole thing together and that didn't show you how did I do the process. So I made the little booklet. I put, oh, I didn't put the stamps in there. A little spot for the stamps, put the um, ribbon on the back, put my Tracy label on the front, I sewed that on and put it on and um, yeah, I'll just glue it down. And so I was thinking, oh, I'm showing her and I need to make this into a pocket. Sorry, I turn the fan off uh, when I make the videos because it gets really loud, but it gets really warm in the garage because my cave is in the garage. And where did I have this? Oh, it's on the edge of the page. Not like right on the edge, but like kind of edge-ish. And I will push this down. And I didn't assemble the other one completely so I could show you my process. And some of you may say, Corey, are you kidding me? But but there is a method to my madness. And I thought I'd show it to you because you don't want to do what I do and make a mistake and then go, oh, man, I have to redo that. Okay. And I didn't do a great job of tying that, but you get the idea. All right. So that, and then this just, I haven't even trimmed this yet after putting it in. I didn't check to make sure that it was the right length. Oh, it's actually a good length, good height. Now you can see, I just hid my image, right? Well, I don't want it hidden. So what I'll do is come back and trim it. And actually that's kind of pretty the way it is. Maybe I'll leave that and leave that and leave that. Okay, I like that. All right, and that's how that one looks. Here, this one, I'll show you. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe it, an hour. Sorry, guys, I ugh, takes way, way too long. All right, when I'm putting these together, um, here's the little booklet. I just sewed some paper into a piece of folded over cardstock. I will glue this down. And in this particular case, I want it right here. Why not? Just because it sounded good. All right. When I'm putting this piece on, I grab tape and I'll put it all the way around the back and I'll make myself a bow, however I want it to tie, right? And mm, guesstimate about right here and about that long. So I'll make my bow and I'll tie it tight, but just, you know, and that way if it's too long on one side or, you know, it's really off center, I can adjust it. Like, oh, I need to move it over. I need to move it up. I need to move it down. I need to adjust my string before I tie it. I want it a little offset. Yeah, maybe I should. So let's see. I want to come this way just a little bit more so that it's a little less uneven. And I'll tie it again. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit better. They're, they're closer to the same length without being the exact same length, all right? And then I'll adjust where I want it to land. I want the name Jessamine to show. I want it towards the bottom. The length is good, the location is good. So when I've got the bow the way I want it, then I'll flip it over and I'll put a piece of packing tape on it. Packing tape is great stuff because, whoops, make sure it's straight, because now it'll be held into place with a little um, extra embossing powder there. It'll be held into place exactly where I want it. So now when I open and close it on my booklet, it won't change. That's what I wanted to show you there. And I didn't put this well, I've already got it in place, so it doesn't matter. I'll open it up. I had had the tape done. I have no idea how in the world this has taken this long. I apologize. All right. And I'll add stamps to these. Ones in coordinating colors. And this is just a little glassine bag with a little itty bitty one of those Velcros that I showed you yesterday. A little Velcro bit on there. And then we'll tie this. I'm not going to tie it right now because... 
but I will glue it on. Then I'll, glue. you know, maybe that is why I tie it because then the strings don't get in the way of the glue. Now, put it like this, and that's why I lay it on the front tied usually. Okay, put this back over here. And on that front corner, and I'll push it down. And I could clamp it. A lot of times I'll use a stamp block to hold it in place while I'm waiting for it to dry. And then here is my full fabric flip on this one. And this one's a little long, so I'll turn it on. Okay. All right. And again, my lace bits kind of cover here. This, this bit of lace was just a leftover offcut from our lace cover that we did on the um, Flip Slaps and Folds idea book. Um, do I like that? Maybe a little bit there. And then uh, I'm going to cut this down just a tiny bit more. That's a scrap. And I'll probably use those scraps for something. So there you go. And then I'll tie this up. And that is it for today. I am not going to answer those questions. I'm going to save this piece because this is so stinking long. Maybe I'll have to do a separate video where I answer some of these questions. So thank you very much for watching. I apologize for the length and happy creating.